If you kill me because of the mistake I made, it won't save your husband's life. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Uh, well, Mrs. Temple and Mr. Temple, how are you this morning? Won't you join us for breakfast, Mr. Paladin? We'd sure like to have your company. Well, all right. Very kind of you. I don't enjoy eating alone either. Yeah. Oh, I thought you two were leaving last night. William never showed up. I can't imagine our son-in-law leaving us here, waiting. I just know something's wrong. Oh, Dora, there's no use fretting. I told you there must have been a mix-up in the dates. Either that or Imogene hasn't gotten your letter yet. But I wrote her four weeks before we left. Where does your daughter live? Oh, she and her husband have a farm near San Jose. Oh, Charlie, the desk clerk said they call it San Jose. Oh, well... <laughs> Mr. Paladin knows where I mean. <laughs> well, if you sent a letter from Ohio four weeks before you left, she would have gotten by now. That's what I think. I told him, Jean, that the train would arrive on the 15th and we would come to the Carlton Hotel and wait for William to pick us up, just like she asked us to. Well, we, we got here on the 15th, and that was two days ago. Oh, Mr. Paladin! Mr. Paladin! Uh, yes, over here, hey boy. Oh... They told me you were in here, but I didn't see you at your table. Yes, well, Mr. and Mrs. Temple asked me to join them. Oh, very good. Uh, telegram come for you, Mr. Paladin. Oh, thank you. Would you excuse me, please? Oh, yes, of Go course. Right ahead. Uh, Do you want me to send answer, Mr. Paladin? Uh, yes, the usual reply, hey, boy, and I'll be leaving on the afternoon stage. Yes, sir. Oh, dear me, I do hate telegrams. I hope that wasn't bad news, Mr. Paladin. Oh, no, no. Just a business matter. But by coincidence, I'll be going to San Jose myself today. Dora, maybe we ought to go on that stage, too, with Mr. Paladin. But what about William? He comes here and finds us gone. Well, we can leave a message for him with the desk clerk. I am anxious to see Imogene. And as long as Mr. Paladin will be on the same stage, we... uh, would you mind, Mr. Paladin? Oh, none at all. As a matter of fact, I'd enjoy your company. Dora? Well, all right. If William isn't here by the time the stage leaves, we'll go with Mr. Paladin. The telegram was from Sheriff Donovan in Salinas. It briefly stated, The professor escaped, headed towards San Jose. Thousand dollar reward. Are you interested? I was interested. A month before, the man they called the professor had killed an old friend of mine during a bank hold up in Salinas. Sheriff Donovan had captured him and was holding him for trial. Now, somehow, he had escaped. I had never seen the professor, but he was well known throughout the state as a daring hold-up man who always worked alone. And his ruthlessness was camouflaged by a suave appearance and polite manners. Mr. and Mrs. Temple's son-in-law had not come for them at the hotel, so they accompanied me on the stage to San Jose. I knew that I would have to see them safely to their daughter's ranch before I could start my search for the professor. You know, Mr. Paladin... I just can't get over how different you look. No? How's that, ma'am? Back at the hotel, you wore such fine clothes. But now, with that gun you're wearing, it, it's so frightening. Now, Dora. Well, when a man is away from the city, Mrs. Temple, he sometimes changes. Why? Oh, there's some mighty greedy men around these parts. And I'm sure you and Mr. Temple will never be bothered by people like that. I should hope not. What kind of business are you in, Mr. Paladin? Well, I have a card. Here. Perhaps this will explain. Hmm. Oh, yes, I see. Let me see that, Charlie. Have gun, will travel. Uh, you just don't look like the same person we knew back at the hotel. Why are we stopping? Now, this is Midway Station. The driver will get some fresh horses here. It'll give us a chance to stretch our legs. Oh, that's good. You folks uh, can get out now and rest a spell. Yeah. 
How long will he be here? About 20 minutes. Sally, Mr. Paladin must be one of those gunfighters. Shh. May I help you down, Mrs. Temple? Oh, uh, why, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Mr. Temple? Uh, I guess I can make it all right. <laughs> I ain't that old yet. Oh, Charlie, look at that sunset. <gasps> Never seen anything like that back in Ohio. Oh, my. Yes, that is pretty. Just go on inside if you like. Mr. Braley will have some coffee for oh, you. Oh, that's just what I need. I have to take the horses out back. How much further is it to San Josie, Mr. Paladin? About ten miles. Howdy. Come in make yourselves at home. Oh, my. Nice and warm in here. Just the three of you on the stage? That's right. Uh, Mr. Brady, coffee pot's on the stove. I'll bring you some cups. Uh, Some place I can wash up around here? Right through that door to the kitchen. You can't miss it. I'm going to try to get some of this dust off me. Do you want to wash up, Dora? No, no. You go ahead, Charlie. All right. I'll be right back. I, uh... I hope I haven't said anything unflattering towards you, Mr. Paladin. Huh. About the gun? Yes. Oh, no. I just don't understand why a man would have to wear a gun. Here you are, folks. Just help yourselves with coffee. Thank you. Mr. Braley, do you stay out here in this desolate place all alone? Why, yes, ma'am. I have my own living quarters right here. People come through twice or maybe three times a day. Always seeing new faces. And they don't stay more than 20 minutes or so. It's right pleasant. Howdy. How do you do? Something I can do for you, mister? I was looking for the stage driver. Well, he's out back with the horses. The stage is going to San Jose. If you want a ticket, I can sell you one. No, thank you. I'll be going in the other direction. Oh, does uh, this door lead to the back? No, just to the kitchen. If you want to see the driver, you'll have to go out front and around. No, that won't be necessary. Now that I have a good view of the front door, I can see him when he comes in. Oh! Oh. Uh, If you people will please put your hands above your heads. He has a gun under his coat. Do as he says, Mrs. Temple. You're a very sensible man, sir. And would I be correct in assuming that you are the man they call the professor? Quite correct. The professor? Who's he? He's one of those men I was telling you about earlier, Mrs. Temple. He makes his living by thieving and killing. That was a very harsh statement, sir. Well, what are you going to do? I assure you, madam, I have no intention of hurting you or either one of these gentlemen. I only want your money or any other valuables you might have on you. And I'll also take the agent's cash box, and then I will leave quietly. Dora, I... Charlie! Mr. Temple, get back in. You... you tricked me. Don't you do it, Professor. Mr. Temple. Mr. Temple. It is he. No. The bullet hit his shoulder, but I think the fall did more damage than the bullet. The professor is dead. Braley, we'll have to get a doctor for Mr. Temple. About five miles the nearest doctor. Well, can you bring him here? Why, sure. You can put Mr. Temple in my bed. It's in that room. I'll be back as soon as I can. It was pretty fancy shooting, mister. Mr. Paladin. You shot my husband. I know, Mrs. Temple. It was a mistake. Mistake? I didn't mean to, Mrs. Temple. I'm sorry. I was trying to save his life as well as ours. That man wasn't going to shoot us. He said he wasn't. Mrs. Temple, he was going to shoot your husband. You saw that. No, I didn't see it. If you hadn't pulled that gun out, I don't think you would have tried to kill any of us. I believe that. You're one of those gunfighters we've heard about. You're a killer. Dandruff bothers most men, most women too. So listen, today you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute. 
to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes, with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. The stage driver agreed to take the professor's body into San Jose and tell the sheriff what had happened. I carried Mr. Temple to the bed and made him as comfortable as possible. He was still unconscious. Mrs. Temple and I kept a close watch over him as we waited for Braley to return with the doctor. The one dim lantern in the room flickered over the still form of Charlie Temple lying in bed and his wife sitting in a chair beside him. As I paced the floor, I said a silent prayer for the life of this man who had been hit by a stray bullet from my gun. Mr. Paladin. <laughs> yes? I was thinking about how pleasant it was back at that hotel in San Francisco. And how all of this wouldn't have happened we hadn't come with you. Yes, I know, Mrs. Temple. I was thinking about that, too. You never know what a person is really like when you first meet them. You've got to wait until they show themselves for what they really are. You're thinking about me? Yes. I'm sorry you feel that way. I've tried to explain. Mr. Paladin, I want you to do something for me. Yes, ma'am. If Charlie dies, I want you to kill me. Oh, you... You don't mean that. But I do. I'll pay you. I must be the most contemptible person you've ever known. Charlie always said that we would live to be 90 years old. And when we had to leave this earth, we would go together. It's something we've felt, we've known for a long time. We'll always be together, we'll... We only have each other. Well, you have your daughter. Oh, no, she doesn't need me. A daughter never belongs to her mother. Imogene has her own life to lead, and her own family. It doesn't include her mother. She doesn't need no, me. No. It isn't good to think this way, Mrs. Temple. You must think about your husband living, that he'll be all right. He isn't breathing anymore. You're wrong. He is breathing. He's still the same. But it doesn't look like it. Well, I assure you he is. You're getting weary, Mrs. Temple. Why don't you step outside and get some fresh air? No, I won't leave Charlie. You, you, you can't make me do that. Well, I wouldn't try if you didn't want to. Could I get you a cup of coffee? Oh, yes, thank you. I'd like some coffee. Here you are. Mrs. Temple. This rifle was hanging on the wall. If you killed me, would it make you feel better? Yes. Yes, it would. Why? Because you killed Charlie. He isn't dead, Mrs. Temple. You keep saying that, but it isn't true. Why don't you see for yourself? No, you're trying to fool me. If I turn away from you, you kill me. I thought that's what you wanted me to do. Uh, Dora. Charlie? Your husband is waking up, Mrs. Temple. Oh! Oh! Charlie! Charlie! He's back in the bedroom, Doc. Oh, Mr. Paladin, this here is Dr. Joven. Doctor? Mr. Paladin? He was home having supper, but he come with me just as soon as I got there. Is the man still unconscious? No, I think he's coming out of it, but there's been quite a strain on Mrs. Temple. Maybe you can give her something to quiet her down. I'll see what I can do. I guess it's been pretty calm around here while I was gone, huh? Yes. I suppose you could say that, Mr. Braley.
Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? <laughs> Before the doctor left, he assured me that Mr. Temple was going to be all right and that Mrs. Temple was resting comfortably. He suggested that I wait until the next morning to continue our trip to their daughter's ranch. Funny how, doing all the excitement, I forgot to offer you something to eat. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered, Mr. Braley. Think we ought to ask the old lady if she wants something? Mm. No, as long as she's resting, we might as well leave her alone. If she wakes up before we turn in, maybe she'll want to eat. I want you to know that you're welcome to use my wagon in the morning to take him into San Jose. That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Bailey. You've been very helpful. Well, now I wonder who that could be this time of night. Hello, Miss Bailey. Oh, a sheriff. Come in. Miss Paladin, this is Sheriff Miller from San Jose. Yeah. Sheriff? Miss Paladin, I'm glad to make your acquaintance. The stage driver told me what happened here this evening, and I came out to congratulate you. For killing a man? Yes, sir. That professor cut up quite a ruckus in our town the last two days. Killed three men. We're mighty grateful for what you did. You came all the way out here to tell me that? No, not exactly. The driver told me the temples were here, and I came out to take him back to their daughter. How's the old man? The uh, doctor says he'll be all right, but we should wait until tomorrow morning to take him back. Oh, I see. Where's Miss Temple? Oh, she's in... I'm right here, Sheriff. I heard you talking about my daughter. Yes, ma'am. She asked me to come get you folks. How is she? Well, she was awful worried about you and Mr. Temple. She tried to get word to you up in San Francisco that she couldn't come after you. But they said you'd already left the hotel... She was waiting at the stage office for you, but, of course, you weren't on that stage when it come in. Well, she knows we're here? Yes, ma'am. The driver told her what happened. She wanted to come with me, but I wouldn't let her. Told her she'd best stay home with the kids. Well, why didn't William come with you? Well, I don't exactly know how to tell you this, Miss Temple. You sure you feel all right? Yes. What's happened to William? He was shot. You're telling me he's dead. William's dead? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Emmett. Oh. It happened about a mile from his ranch yesterday. He was robbed and killed by that professor fellow. You mean the same man who was here? Same one. But thanks to Mr. Paladin, he won't be killing anybody else. Ever. Sheriff, will you take us to my daughter now, tonight? Why, yes, ma'am. If you think it'll be all right to move, Mr. Temple. No, it's much better. It'll be all right. Imogene needs us. My daughter needs me. Mr. Paladin. Yes, ma'am. I owe you an apology. I behaved rather foolishly. Well, under the circumstances, Mrs. Temple, uh, it was understandable. Would you come with us? I want my daughter to meet the man who saved our lives and avenged her husband's death. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, uh, Hello, Mr. Pilot. Hello, Miss Wong. I'm so happy to see you back. Oh, it's good to be home. Oh, did you see morning paper? No, but no. Hey Boy was trying to tell me something about it when I met him downstairs. Oh, you big hero. Oh. The paper say you shoot down notorious killer. Ah. Ah. Well, I guess a lot of people are glad the professor won't be around to threaten them anymore. Oh, yes, ah. What do you do with all that money, Mr. Paladin? Money? Money, yes, sir. Thousand dollar reward. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten about that. Well, Miss Wong, let's send that money to Mr. and Mrs. Temple's daughter. Uh, Miss uh, and Mrs. Temple? Oh, the elderly people who were at hotel a few days ago? Yes. Yes. Their son-in-law was killed by the professor. Oh, sad. And their daughter could make good use of that money. Yes, uh, Would be very nice, Mr. Paladin. <laughs> Smoking more today, but enjoying it less. Try Camels. More people smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Any filter, any king, any regular. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor and easygoing mildness. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Barney Phillips, Harry Bartell, Olin Soleil, and Lorene Tuttle. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>